Grab your pillow and chill with your boy Brillo. I'm back with a new video. If you come across this video, like and subscribe. Show your boy some love. To the haters, be quiet. I'm just getting started. That being said, let's get started on today's video. It's a recap video on episode six, Level Up. The episode was fire. Let's get straight into it. It starts off with Rock in the projects. She's meeting with the building inspector, and this guy is a creep. As soon as he meets with her, he's talking down the rock, and he agrees to meet her alone. So we know what he's trying to do. Rock also knows what he's trying to do. So, of course, she has the gun with her when she meets him. She tries to get him to take some money, but this guy actually puts his hands on Rock and tries to rape her. So he knocks her to the floor. Um, we don't know what's going on. Um, she grabs a hammer. Boom. And it's hammer time. Hits this dude in the head. He's knocked out. Then she calls Marvin and, and tells Marvin, make sure you feel it on the way out. Know what that means. So, of course, Marvin putting in work in the field, getting his hands dirty, putting in work, puts this dude inside of the wall, and that's the end of the building inspector. And that's what you get for trying to rape a woman and trying to rape putting hands on rock. Are you crazy? Must have been crazy. Then, of course, we see Howard. Um, he's talking to his doctor. He kind of... Creeps up on her. She's a little startled. But uh, I don't know if it was lighting or uh, just great acting. But this guy actually really looks sick. And he asked her, you know, what if I had a son? She told him, of course, you'll have a better chance of surviving if you had a son. And that's the end of that scene. Then um, they're setting up for the showcase. And, of course, you know, everybody's coming up to Lulu asking for money. Rock doesn't really like that. She don't see the value in having this going on right now with so much going on in the business she kind of gets on lulu's head a little bit and um she wants to sell product there and lulu tells her no this is not what's going on here we're not selling product here and you know lulu gave me kind of ghost vibes at time the classic man you know he wants to do something clean and rock can't see the value in it but i think she will in the future rock is too smart not to see the value in that in the future so that's the plan. Um, Lulu wants to uh, wants to showcase. He don't want anybody selling that there. There, so he has to go see Unique and ask for a favor. So of course the favor is don't sell it to showcase. Unique agrees, but this is just part one of his play. In my last episode, I said Unique was gonna step it up, and he definitely did. So he wants Scrap and his right hand man to spray up the showcase. Spray it up. He said the audacity coming in here doing wartime, the audacity coming here asking for a favor during wartime. So Unique says, spray it up. This is a test for Scrap as well. They want to clap Lulu. So that was part one of his plan. Next, uh, Marvin goes to get the re-up and uh, it's not there. He goes to get it, he pulls up and he, it's nothing there. Nobody has dropped anything off. They're a little confused, so they meet up to talk about it, agree to go see Dean. So Rock goes to see Dean, and Dean is there, and he tells her, look, I'm not messing with you no more, Rock. Basically, I know what you did with Smurf. Smurf is dead, and you cannot be trusted. You know what? I don't fault him at all. I do not fault him at all. He cut her off, and actually, Unique is paying 20% more for her load to put her out of business. And that was part two of Unique's play. Unique is stepping up. He finally got on the scoreboard with Rock. But I actually think this might be beneficial to Rock because I think she's going to get a better connect because she went to see the store owner. And, of course, his wife is behind the counter, and she has brand new shiners, and he's been beating on her again. I cannot wait till somebody kills this dude or lays hands on this dude. He is a scumbag. Every time this lady's on the screen, she's getting beat up by this dude. It's ridiculous. Like, I can't power. I cannot wait for somebody to lay hands on this dude. And I hope it's Rock or his wife that end up ending him. But anyway, Rock wants to get a new plug. So she goes and says, I want to talk to your cousins. And of course, I think the lady's going to make it happen for Rock because she looks up to Rock. Definitely looks up to Rock. So she's going to make that happen. And I think that's going to be an even better plug for her. Now, my man Kanan has a plan. He's been listening to Symphony in class, just like his mom. 
He's been listening to the symphony, and now he wants to slang at the same gas station the symphony was telling him about that the white people get on and get off. He wants to slang that straight butter, that crack rock right there at the scene. And he tells Marvin about it, and at first Marvin's not with it, but yeah, Marvin's going to get with it because they can, they can charge double prices too, and it's not going to on anybody's territory it's, it's basically an open market and finally we see Kanan stepping up stepping up his mind is trying to think like like a real businessman so I definitely think that's going to work uh, of course we see uh, Howard's partner she's on the streets by herself today she's on the streets by herself and she's making moves so she sees jukebox with her girlfriend kind of hugged and um, because after the last episode, of course, the, the girl had to come and see Jukebox to, to talk about that. Um, so she's, she, she puts her on the bus and Jukebox walks away and the cop talks to her. And she kind of tells Jukebox without saying it, like, like that I'm gay too, we could talk about anything, I'm just investigating d -Wiz. And this might be kind of the reason why uh, Jukebox became a cop. If she developed a relationship with this cop, I don't know. Maybe that's in the future. Maybe that's part of the reason why she became a cop. Next, we got uh, Jukebox. Uh, Jukebox is nervous before the showcase, y'all. She's in the bathroom throwing up. Nobody can get her. Famous is nervous. He thinks she's going to ruin his chances. He was hilarious in that scene. And uh, so Kanan has to talk to her. So first, Kanan apologized for his BS remarks in the last episode. And this kind of show how truly close they are, um, how much they have each other's back and they love each other. Um, it was just, it was my favorite scene of the uh, episode because uh, it kind of showed a different light of those characters and they really had each other's backs. They told a story about something that happened in their childhood <clears throat> and how Kana had to talk her out the bathroom a uh, previous time the scene. And like Kana said, it wasn't our first time. So he puts the battery in her back. They go, they go out and they're about to take the stage. Of course, Rock is leaving. Um, leaving the club. She tries to order a drink, but she sees Symphony. She gets livid, man. She walks away. She don't want anything to have to, with this dude. She basically dumps him. And I felt bad for Symphony because Symphony was in a catch-22. He wants to, you know, he wants to be a positive influence for Kanan and have Kanan's back because he cares for Rock. But Rock doesn't see it like that. She sees it as a, a betrayal. And maybe she'll change her man, but I felt bad for Symphony. I thought Symphony. I think I think Symphony is a good dude. A lot of people think he's a Fed or a crook or something, man. I actually think he's a good dude, good character, and I hope he. Uh, I hope he uh, gets back gets back with Rock or whatever. Um, honestly, but next um, after after she dumps Symphony, <laughs> dumps him to the ground. She sees somebody just trying to press Lulu. Somebody from Brooklyn trying to press Lulu. So she walks over and she doesn't say a word. She just stands there next to Lulu. And the dude sees Rock and says, okay, well, no problem. The uh, confrontation is over. And Lulu kind of looks like, man, would you just go? Like, I had to handle it. But she really didn't say nothing. This shows how much power Rock really has on the streets. Like people know Rock is not to be played with. This dude fell in line immediately just by her coming up and looking. Next, we see Scrap and Unique's right-hand man breaking into the showcase uh, to lay the plate out. And then they're going on stage. Uh, Famous is nervous, actually, which, which is crazy. He was talking all that trash, but now he's getting stirred from stage fright. He's about to blow it. So Juke, me and Juke, save the day, and turns all the way up, tells the DJ cut the music, shouts out Southside, gets the crowd so hyped. Famous snaps out of his trance. And he start, and they start uh, performing uh, Street Life. Juke is killing the hook, Famous Bars. If you go back and listen to Famous Bars, this track is like actually a D-Wiz tribute and Buck 20 dicks at the same time. I mean, this dude is right. He's actually said F four quarters and two dimes. So go back and listen to those bars. Famous was actually dissing Buck 20. And they said rip D Wiz at the end, but Kanan kind of looked at the bars that Spanish famous was spitting like, man, this dude rapping about my life, talking about corner bodega, press dude like a Sega, like Kanan, like I, like that's me, I did that, so I think he's gonna have something to say to famous about that. 
Next, we got Marvin pulling up to he got his new crew or whatever. Uh, I think Marvin's gonna have a new crew. Uh, I think it's those same dudes who were outside the club when he was fighting, um, who said they was ready to put in work. He pulled up on them, and I think, and he, they said, "Where are we gonna be on some corners?" He said, "No, the highway." So of course, him and Kane about to start making that 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 real green stepping up to the plate. And oh, next we get Kanan going to see his baby Davina, and he finally claps Davina. Clap it up for Kanan. I'm glad he finally did that because I personally think he's going to end up killing Davina. So he tries to sneak back home. He sneaks in, but as soon as he sneaks in, boom, he hears a gunshot and a loud noise outside. He goes outside and it's Scrap. And Scrap is looking bad, y'all. It's looking bad for Scrap. He looked like Kanan did. When ghosts set them on fire, like they didn't torture Scrap. And it goes off with us supposed to think Scrap is dead. Personally, I don't think Scrap is dead. I think he's a important character in the maturation of Kanan. So I don't think they would kill him. So this is just going to make Kanan know, like, I have to be on point. Like, pretty much, I'm the reason why this happened to Scrap. If he wouldn't have gotten into a fight with me for being stupid, then... He never would have had to go and do this stupid double agent plan. Like, I knew that wasn't going to work. I said that in my last video. I knew that wasn't going to work. Rock was slipping with that. And I think Scrap is going to live. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. But that was the episode. Level up. Fire episode. Go and check out those famous bars. Um, yeah, you come across this page, this page, like and subscribe. Show me some love. With that being said, with that being said, I don't know much, but I'm for sure going to turn up. Holla at you, boy.